the Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize to Dennis Mukwege and Nadia Murad for their efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war. Dennis Mukwege is the helper who has devoted his life to defending these victims. Nadia Murad is the witness who tells of the abuses perpetrated against herself and others. Both put their personal security at risk by courageously combating war crimes and seeking justice for victims. An uncommon courage it is. Congolese doctor Dennis Mweje, Yazidi activist Nadia Murad have together won the Nobel Peace Prize for this year. Their work, their strength through suffering, their voices, making them frontline defenders for people used as weapons of war. The decision this morning from the Nobel Committee, especially notable given the alignment with the Me Too movement, and a striking message from the Nobel Committee to call attention to the rights of women and those who come forward. Laura McQuillan has been tracking the story for us. Uh, we'll get some reaction in just a second, but first we need to know a little bit more about these two who are going to share this most prestigious of honours. Laura. Both of these recipients icons in that effort to stop sexual violence against women in conflict zones. Let me tell you a bit more about each of them. One of them, Dr. Dennis Mukwege. Now, he is a Congolese gynecologist who has dedicated his life to this cause. He established his own hospital where he has treated tens of thousands of survive survivors of sexual violence in the Congo, women who have been gang raped by soldiers there in a civil war that has killed millions of people. And he has been an outspoken and critic of the military and the government in the Congo. In fact, about six years ago, he was driven from his home country by armed men who um, attempted to attack him, to silence him over this mission that he has been behind. The other recipient today, Nadia Murad, she is a young Yazidi woman from Iraq. And in 2014, she was kidnapped by ISIS militants. She was held captive for three months, raped, abused and threatened with execution. She managed to escape to a refugee camp and since then she has been speaking out. Speaking out not just for survivors of sexual violence but for the Yazidi people right around the world and she has shared her story around the world. So the Nobel Committee today saying both of these people have made a really crucial contribution to that cause, not just through their actions but through their words as well, Heather. And what about reaction to these two? I mean, we're still also wondering, I don't know if they've actually reacted themselves because you've been telling us through the morning that they hadn't actually been informed yet. They hadn't been able to contact them. But what kind of uh, reaction are we seeing thus far, Laura? We are keeping an eye out for anything okay. from the two winners themselves. We haven't had anything as yet, though we have reached out to both of them to try to get a comment. In the meantime, we have seen that at least uh, Nadia Murad is aware that she has won the award now because she spoke by telephone to Iraq's president this morning and he congratulated her. He posted on Twitter saying that awarding Nadia Murad in, um, embodies the world's recognition of the tragedy of the Yazidi and all the victims of terrorism and a tribute to the struggle and steadfastness of Iraqis in confronting terrorism and extremism. That message shared online by Iraq's president this morning. We have also seen a statement of congratulations from an organization that shares Dr. Mukwege's name. It is a Dutch organization that is fighting against sexual violence in war zones as well. And in a statement, it said, in selecting Dr. Mukwege, the Nobel Prize Committee is sending a clear message that sexual violence in wars is unacceptable and must stop. It said that his work has had an impact on the lives of tens of thousands of survivors and really an impact on a lot of people right around the world, Heather. So in terms of the timeliness of this. I mean, the, the Nobel Committee is notoriously secretive. Maybe more than 300 candidates consider this time and they don't really give their reasons for, for choosing. But this certainly is an issue that we are talking about increasingly at this time. Might that have weighed into their consideration? It's possible because ahead of time we did see a lot of speculation over 
who might be the winners this year. And when these two were named, there were questions about whether this had anything to do with the year of Me Too and women who have spoken out around the world about their experiences of abuse and assault. Well, the Nobel Committee was asked that question this morning, and here is what its chair said. Me Too and war crimes is not quite the same thing. But they do, however, have that in common, that it is important for, um, to see the suffering of women, to see the abuses, and to achieve that. It is also important that women uh, leave the concept of shame and speak up. So perhaps not directly related to the Me Too movement, but the Nobel Committee saying they both have important messages and they wanted to share that message today, Heather. Nadia Murad, her work on the world stage, as Laura was mentioning, brought her to Canada 2016 here and in Ottawa as a UN Goodwill Ambassador and officially recognized on Parliament Hill. United Nations Goodwill Ambassador for the dignity of survivors of human trafficking. It was a moment in October of 2016 recognized for speaking out on behalf of Yazidi refugees and telling her story. And there to witness something really unusual, the unanimous vote, all 313 MPs supporting an opposition motion, conservative motion declaring ISIS persecution of the Yazidis as a genocide and making a pledge to bring Yazidi refugees to Canada. And Ottawa, as a result, created a special program for Yazidi refugee families. I want to bring you the person who was instrumental for that motion and behind it all the way. She's in Chicago this morning, but we say hello to uh, immigration critic, conservative MP Michelle Rempel. Good morning to you. Good morning. Couldn't help but notice your tweet this morning. Nadia, yes. Uh, tell me how you feel about her being selected for the Nobel Peace Prize. She is uh, a model of courage and a model of conviction. And I, I, I can't think of anyone on the planet more deserving than her. This is a victory for her. It's a victory for her people. And it underscores the need for international action to prevent uh, women's bodies being used as tools of war. What do you think the effect of her being chosen for this will, will be? I think, I hope it, that it emboldens the international community to, to really understand that we have a lot more to do in terms of preventing sexual violence, preventing genocide, uh, and bringing the perpetrators to justice. I, and, I, and I also think, too, that uh, it will create more attention to the fact that the genocide against her people is ongoing and that the community, international community needs to move to stop it. Uh, and I... I She's just so courageous. You, you cannot help but feel emboldened after you talk to this woman with her passion. And considering the trials that she's gone through, it, she really is a triumph of humanity, and this is so well-deserved. Tell me a little bit about speaking to her, I mean, maybe through a translator, I guess, but as you dealt with her, because you brought her to Canada for all of that procedure back in 2016 and when everyone supported your, your, your motion, and there she was in the House to see it and was reported to have had tears in her eyes at seeing it because it was so emotional for her to see parliamentarians working on the cause, which obviously had such a big impact on her, but your dealings with her personally at that time, Ms. Rempel. Um, what has been so encouraging and beautiful to watch is Nadia come out of her trials and still be courageous and speaking up, but, you know, seeing the impact that it had on her, and I'm sure she'll carry that for many years, but she's engaged to be married. Um, I saw her at the UN General Assembly last year. She's, she's convicted, and I think, you know, she's... She, She's beginning to find some peace in the work that she's doing. And I can't think of a greater story of triumph. Yeah. And um, what do you so think? Well that, deserved. Yes, her visit to Canada at your request and witnessing what she did here, what impact did, do you think that had on her, her connection here? I, I, I think that I, I would hope that Nadia left Canada knowing that she had some allies around the world and that people around the world weren't letting the words never again ring hollow, that uh, there are people in the world who are willing to stand up for justice, to make change when change needs to occur, and, and to not allow inertia to, to stop justice from being served, uh, even to some of the most marginalized people in the world. So 
I hope that's what she left with. And I, you know, if that's not the spirit of Canada, I'm not sure what is. Michelle Rimple, I very much appreciate the time this morning. Thank you for joining us from Chicago and explaining the Canadian connection 